course, I don't know. Maybe with the finger of death, you have an easier way to quickly snipe out someone like the coddle. Maybe for those support kills a little bit faster. So, could be the name of the game for Osmium. But, like you said, this lion is not picked up nearly as often as other heroes that kind of do similar things for good reason most of the time. But, Osmium could still make it work. In the meantime, with that lion pick, we do move into the next phase of the bands. Osmium... Uh, removing the Undying. That's always kind of an interesting one. They were one of the squads that, I believe, tried to run that Undying earlier on in this event, and it was kind of... kind of meh in terms of its effectiveness, so... I don't really know if the other teams are valuing it to the same degree, so Osmium... I don't know, maybe in their own heads a little bit with that band. The Tiny Band, though, certainly going to make a lot of sense. Yeah, and I think, uh... At the very least, they're trying to cover for the CK. I feel as if the, the coolest thing we could see from Osmium is maybe we do get that switch up where the CK finally gets flexed to the offlane, a move that really we've seen no teams do over the past few days. It's always been to the carry position. Usually he does get a fairly good matchup at the end of the day, so I think that's why teams are going for it. But uh, it's where I think Osmium in their bands are keeping their options open. Love to see the pit ward ban out. I think that hero is also gaining speed at an incredible rate. I feel like uh, almost Osmium would have wanted to take up that hero just because uh, we've already seen its strength versus the storm. But when it comes to defending your CK illusions, they've really done a fine job so far. Nice job of trying to enable that if they are looking, well, especially if they're looking to put it in a carry position, but really uh, anywhere in terms of. Or meanwhile, just keep on plowing ahead. With the mid bands here, Invoker, Puck, and Ember Spirit, of course, they're the team that pulled the trigger on the Storm Spirit in Phase 1, so it makes sense that they're now sort of trying to protect that matchup as much as possible. So, three straight mid bands into the Clockwork pick. Now, we've seen this hero before. We saw it earlier on today, even uh, out from Nouns, but... To be honest, it's been a lot of situations here where we know what the theoretical strength of this Clockwork is, but the actual execution hasn't always matched up yeah it's a typical or rather a, a very difficult hard five i want to say to pull off you need levels you need a lane usually it's going to be your clockwork rotating in mid to take it over uh, you know kind of butting heads with the coddle who i think also really needs that to get going uh it's also just not the strongest hero up until level the six you know you have to wait for that 10 minute mark and then you can start making plays it really weakens your early game to a certain degree uh not just that i think in the marana here picks up you're not going to see that easy tp rotation where suddenly you're in a trial lane scenario and then the clockwork's the difference maker uh really that's where he's going to try to play up on this line as much as he can it will be a five lion now with the marana getting picked up but it's where you still wonder if this clockwork's going to still feel effective, if he's going to be able to provide what his team needs. And if there's one thing he does provide, it is that additional lockdown. But that's also where Hikori do not have that much burst damage right now. It really is all in on kind of the storm and the coddle. It sure illuminates a great spell, but whether or not you can actually keep them pinned down that long is a little bit of a concern here. And something that we saw in that noun series is when the clockwork doesn't have that immediate burst, when he doesn't have the target to help him kill whoever he's, he's hookshotted onto, well, it's one of those melee initiators in very similar vein to Sand King, where once you're in, you're kind of the next target. And if you are stuck in there that long, it's where heroes like the CK and the Koka just punish you. They just kill you outright, basically, unless they're the ones getting on them themselves. It's where I think, unfortunately, with the Corey taking off that timber saw so early, Osmium's got the strength hero lineup, and there's not really that same amount of damage you could just easily pick up. And of course, your clockwork is never really the most durable hero in terms of someone who initiates similarly to the Sand King, but doesn't have the same degree of longevity, speaking of the Sand King. But what Hikori are doing right now concerns me, because you look at the Osmium side, everyone has some form of lockdown, some sort of displacement, I guess we'd, we'd say for the Kunkka, rather than hard stun uh, with that X-Torrent combo. But that is going to be a concern, because now you have two heroes in the clock in the Sand King who are just all in entirely. Once you go in, you either win or you die. And Osmium are going to have the tools to just sort of keep those heroes locked down. And between CK and Kunkka, they should have the damage to then punish those initiations as well. Yep, kind of feels like we're going to get a momentum-based game 
where if Kokori ever kind of slow their roll wherever they stop getting the items. Uh, Vitaly, when he has gotten the Sand King, and he's played it more so than any of their offlaner in the tournament, always gets a 9-10 minute blink dagger. It's what he can do with it after the fact. It's the items that follow, uh, whether or not he goes for the Boots of Travel, or if he just simply gets a BKB. I think he's going to need a BKB really bad in this game, and I think that's where Hikori could hit that nice timing where, you know, they've get, got two BKBs in both their Sand King their Storm Spirit. They try to get that impossible team fight going. It's where right now in their lineup, though, they have absolutely no physical damage. It's what they need to really kind of cover their bases on with Yuma's Hero. I just really hope that we do see them get those clean initiations. And like we keep saying, it's one of those games where Hikori go in, they initiate, they kill their target, or they don't. And then they get turned on, they get boated, they get X, they get stood in place for uh, five, ten seconds, and then most likely just die. Which, I don't know. Makes you think in terms of the carry options available to them. Osmium banned away the Monkey King. Starting to run out of time, though. Maybe something like the PA for Yuma, if they really are looking for a get-in-find-kills, have the fight be over uh, as quickly as possible sort of strategy. Because if they stick around too long, then they're going to get into trouble. And the PA has that concern. If she's stuck in a fight for too long, then uh, a lot of her mobility and her durability kind of go away. But... If you don't plan on having the fight go that long, it might be a step in the right direction for them to just prioritize as much damage in the shortest time possible. Yeah, and I think the AM band is warranted. Of course, you're the team with Sand King, but it's where you do wonder if Akori are going to split it a little bit here. I think versus the Sand King, the CK should be an off laner. It's the simple okay, we're not going to have the easiest time. The illusions might get cleared out. It's better for him just to be a blink stun than it is to be our absolute carry. Uh, but it's also where you're going to be digging into each other's hero pools now, and it's a position where I think Osmium are happy to get the first pick here of their carry because there is that overlap in hero pools. It's where I think a lot of those carries, those ideal carries, are taken out here, and they do decide to split the bands because Osmium do have that flexibility. But this is where you really look in your prep. You wonder, did something get through? Is there something that we're missing here? I think offlane wise, there really isn't anything that we would want to see here from Draken. I think he would be comfortable on the CK. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you look at your Scotty carriers, you look at heroes that maybe you get that easy matchup versus. Really would have loved to see the Yuma TA, but of course, just not in the cards here. Would also love to see the Yuma Morphling, but uh, that's where versus Lion, uh, maybe not. And they do say. Mars is not banned. That's your hole. This is not going to be an easy front line to get through. CK Kunk of Mars. And, uh, boy, Osmium really, really took advantage of that Timbersaw ban from Hikori in Phase 1. Because they just go all in on the strength. And we already talked about Hikori maybe having some issues with their damage output. It's, it's still going to be an issue no matter what carry they get here. There is not a carry in the world that has enough damage to feel entirely comfortable against the opposing three players. Yeah, and not just that, I don't feel like we could see him maybe lean back on a hero like the Terrorblade. Terrorblade versus Lion just doesn't work. He just goes to the lane where your illusions are, and then you lose out on that. Razor? No, it is the Yuma Morphling. Okay. It's interesting. It's cool. That's your Scotty guy. That's your man who's going to be in these fights for a real long time. And we saw Parker beautifully conduct himself yesterday, but that was not into a Lion. That's where you really need to run a fine line here on Yuma when it comes down to vision, when it comes down to what his teammates are able to provide for him. Yuma's got to react to everything because if he doesn't, well, very easily he can get taken down here. I also wonder if we're going to see an early spirit vessel picked up by Sebus just to try and counter out that Morphling even more. Or it could also work, honestly, in that same vein. But it's where I really do hope Yuma, find, or Yuma finds the space to farm here. Uh, otherwise, kind of feels like a wash. Yeah, if the Morphling doesn't really pan out for them, it doesn't feel like they're going to have a crazy amount to then fall back on other than Analog having the perfect Storm Spirit game, but you got to roll the dice, I suppose, if you're Hikori. You didn't really have say, too many better or more traditional options to work with on the back end of your path, so shall see what they can do. We'll see if they can avoid these sort of lockdown combos from the other side, and if they can do that, then... Who knows, right? We're talking about a, a potentially different game at that stage. Yeah, too, too many hypotheticals, too much in the realm of what ifs. It's where we've got some very uh, basic things going for us. We've got Coddle Sand King, we've got Mars Marana, we've got Coddle Storm Spirit. 
And hey, maybe Analog puts on a show for us. He's certainly going to have a relatively easy lane, but uh, at the same time, I do wonder what the counterplay is going to look like. And you are playing versus three strength cores, so when it does come for these kills, it's not going to be fast. Things underway. Voice line spammed. Players exchanging some pleasantries, perhaps they're at the start, and see how this goes. Osmium with the 1-0 lead in this best of two series, hoping for a 2-0 to just kind of get that little bump up into that sort of top four territory. Akori, meanwhile, still not in a bad spot, even if they don't win this game, but a 1-1 split here would sort of allow them to keep pace uh, as well. So still very important stuff here as we approach that sort of halfway mark in this schedule. Smokes. Not really going to lead into too much, just a bit of a vision play from both sides. Osmium with the ward mid, get this ward here in the sort of west side jungle. So they're going to have eyes on some of these uh, sort of stackable camps in the early stages, which up against the Keeper of the Light lineup, that is always something to sort of consider, right? Because the Coddle is particularly adept at stacking up multiple camps at once. Yeah, and he's going to rotate out, get the stacks going, give Soul XP over to Vitaly. Of course, Vitaly has to be very careful, does not want to have that same start that he gave over to Kataro yet again. And of course, not having the Ogre Magi, you know, the Lion certainly uh, a little bit more susceptible to being gone on himself, so you can't really be that same front line, but it's where the magic damage from CK is constant pressure on top of you. No, uh, no real engagements there. No fighting for the bounties. Just a 2-2 two -two split between the sides as we get this underway. And, well, take a look at that top lane first. Because this lane is, well, a lane for Hikori that I don't think can be aggressive by design. Uh, maybe if El Misho does manage to clip multiple heroes in the Illuminate, then an opportunity can present itself. But... It's not really something you can plan for right now. So in the meantime, see what Vitaly's play is. Might just look for the sort of Caustic and Sandstorm sort of build because he is still laning against a, a melee core. So have that little bit of an edge. But right now, look at this. Kataro and Gadio are just spamming out the mana. They got the bolts coming out. They got the earth spikes. They're just looking for as much damage as they can possibly get early to kind of trying to establish a little bit of extra control. And this is always... The weird part about this, because you would think Kataro and Katyu spamming out these spells are going to be clipping the creeps, are going to push the wave forward a little bit, but if El Misho illuminates that creep wave, then you don't really have to worry about it pushing too far forward. Yeah, it's just going to be Kataro pulling the wave back, and it is very hard for anyone to get those denies early on here, unless those really creep camp pulls get off. That's also where Katyu has very nicely uh, set himself up here, where he can very easily get that creep pull off, but... That's when the pull does come through, though. Both uh, the Keeper of the Light and the Sand King are very adept at just farming it in addition to it. Nice dodge of the Chaos Bolt. Another sentry placed. Unfortunately, that's a little mistake from Katyu there, missing out on that extra damage. But, again, very hard to get denied here. Everybody's pretty much going to get farmed. Nice stun, though, from Katyu. It's the little things. Some uh, very active play from the two sides here in this top lane, at least so far. Meanwhile... Uh, over on the other side of things, Yuma and Gardic may be hoping that things aren't quite as active considering the duo that they have to play into. Mars Marana, we all know what it does, and right on cue, there it is. Spear stun into arrow, but Yuma was able to start the attribute shift in time, but that's something he'll constantly have to sort of have an eye on. If he sees that first bit of uh, aggression onto him, gotta be fast on that shift, otherwise this duo is gonna come at yeah, and it is a uh, a little bit of a Mars bully lane here, and we saw before the five clockwork struggling a little bit to just get his job done. It's a nice little half pull for Gardic, Gardic in the meantime, but it's where you always need to be concerned with how little your morph is getting. At least he's able to take some creeps under tower right now, uh, but that's where when it comes to actually contesting for those denies, uh, he's not really capable of it, and neither is Gardic. Gardic is able to defend his bounty room, though. Benefit there. Keep some money in your hands as fight issue here. El Misho is going to pause up the game, so hopefully we can get back into it quickly, but yeah, that is another sort of thing with the clockwork, right? And we talked about this a little bit in the draft. The theoretical contributions that a clockwork can make sound very good, but 
when you get into the match and when you end up in this lane sort of dealing with Murana and Mars, then all of a sudden your effectiveness uh, doesn't really translate as well. But we're all of three minutes in. We'll see what Garda can do once he has the hookshot, once he has points in the cog, because that is where we're really going to try and see him try to shine. For now, though, relatively small plays just to try and... I guess keep Yuma as safe as possible, but Yuma right now, lasted wise is not having the most fun. 7-2 and two is not bad, but you compare it to the cores all over the Osmium side, and it does not look fantastic. Yeah, it's also right next to him, you know. I, I, Vitaly's got a friend in Yuma. They're both, uh, I think, struggling a little bit more than their counterparts, but it's just the benefit of how Osmium have set up their lanes here. A uh, benefit that I, I wish Akori had right now, but that's also where their heroes... I, do believe we'll be a little bit more geared into going to the late game as we lose our mini map there. Very, Very powerful. powerful mini map drawing. Yeah, they're just trying to keep themselves entertained here while this pause goes on and 3D was... shapes. Oh, they're dancing. It's not just the lines anymore. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Very strange stuff, but uh, I do believe a little bit of talking there. I think they're closer getting themselves back into this in the meantime well we can try to briefly touch on this mid matchup it's one that we have certainly seen before though et storm spirit versus kanka and i don't know sebas can sort of hold his own in this lane for sure but analog would have to make a rather sizable mistake for sebas to be able to sort of get that full combo to him and everybody farms as kataro uh something happened there Katara just <laughs> <laughs> hit every button on his keyboard um, yeah, mid lane, it's boring, it's easy, it's really whether or not you get that small camp block off. If you don't, well, who cares? If you do, that's great. Analog has his small camp, Sebus has his. It just means that we're going to see those early level sixes. And with no rotation either from the fours, really, aside from the Marana kind of spending time in and out of the lanes, uh, we'll see if Slade sticks around to take away that bottom water rune. But uh, that's where at the same time the Kato's doing the exact same play. So, really, I think uh, everything levels out pretty much. The good news for Osmium is that Sladen is going to get it a little bit more as he is using that arrow to uh, grab himself a creep or two every once in a while. So you'll have a slight experience advantage for your Marana, which is honestly kind of par for the course. Akori probably sort of baked that into what they expected from these lanes because the Marana very rarely just sits in lane and doesn't try to get that extra experience. Yeah, but Tali is just getting... Absolutely nothing, though. This could be it. X into Torrent, into the arrow. Uh, Analog is not level 6, so he is not getting away from this one just yet, and I think they've got it. Yes, they do. Sebus connecting with the extra damage from the Tidebringer, and there's your first blood. So, good play from Sladen, making the rotation. Now he's going to make his way top. Arrow's going to be back up in just a second, so they're going to look for it. They get the Chaos Bolt down onto El Misho. May not actually need the arrow for the El Misho kill. Yeah, I think Sladen can just sort of get it. Just running him down with the leaps as Kato tried for a play there onto those creeps, but can't pull the aggro in time. Yep, and this top lane is really a disaster for Hikori uh, at this stage of the game as well with how far ahead Kataro is. They can't go for creep pulls. They really need to go for stacks at this point, uh, but with how much uh, El Misho has been really kind of walking around, he Let's actually hasn't again. gotten to stack too much, but yeah, it's mid lane. He's not level 6 yet, but uh, the glyph, yeah, really nice glyph from Analog, keeping his creeps alive. I believe the arrow still kills a glyph, glyph creep, but if the creep is in the way, then you still should be fine there. And now Analog should be able to get this mid wave and then go to the jungle and then find his 6 very safely. Shouldn't give a mistake up here to Sebus. Artist's going to stick around just in case. Gotta love that. And actually, I'd say just in case, they're going to look for a play here. Battery Assault, eh didn't quite connect the way that they wanted. Meanwhile, further up the river, Vitali is in some serious danger here. He is getting run down. Kataro needs one more hit. He's not the one to get it. Oh, that's that's a little bit mean. Cat, you would have had the kill on the Earth Spike, but uh, the damage technically doesn't get applied until they reach the ground, so Sladen was able to actually snipe it out. Yep. I, I'm just real worried. These lanes are not going so good for Hikori. The Mars and the CK are just kind of running away from things, and you would hope that you would have analog kind of picking up the pieces here, but because of that attempt, and there is the clockwork really running interference here, as well as El Misho, uh, Cat you he's taking a lot of damage here, but this is such an awkward fight with so many low-level heroes. 
I feel like Slayton should just be able to walk away. That's a nice pull, though. What? Oh. Okay. They'll still get him, but what a weird series of events. Akori get their first kill, one that they desperately needed, but... They brought four heroes into the west side jungle to make that happen, so it's not the most efficient play, but... At this point, I suppose it's better than nothing. It's something, you know, now your Storm's level 6, so he's not really going to be the target. It's where he can still get hit up by that X, but it's whether or not you can actually time in out with the turret is going to be the real question there. I think the big issue right now is with all this attention and taking the clockwork away from bottom, uh, Draken has just pulled ahead of everything. He is just not giving Yuma all too much to work with. He's level 6 as well, so any hero that rotates down here, it's where unfortunately the Mars is so strong that they want to give Vitaly the lane in the Sand King, but they simply cannot because the Sand King would just be a free kill. It's also where the rotation of Katyu here, they can't afford to leave Katara alone because of how good a lane he has had. It's where, really, you're going to feel that pressure everywhere in Gardic. Well, and the arrow... Um. Okay, yep, yeah, arrow comes in. Cat you trying to buy this time. Actually waiting to see if Yuma comes in. This is the bait play. They would love for the Morphling to just push into a hex, but Yuma will not take the bait, and Gardic actually just makes that all work out. He denies himself to the neutrals, so that's arena down. You don't get anything, but they're gonna still make the play. They got the hex down before he could actually swap that stat, so he's just gonna get picked off and Well Cat you got sick of waiting. He's just gonna do it himself and Yuma gets taken down. That's actually just so sick from Katyu. And to the, you know, the the alien observer there, okay, they missed the kill onto the clockwork because Katyu doesn't walk up and earth spike him. But then you lose track of the line, you have no idea where he is, and Yuma doesn't expect it. He isn't able to react. There's no vision in his lane. There's no lane word. They've got no idea. It's nighttime. You can't react to that. It's a super sick play from Katyu. Discipline sort of working out so well and yeah like you said lesser players would get baited in they would go for the kill they'd say oh we need to get this clockwork on him because he'll deny himself but no offense to Gardic, but who cares is well now he might be in trouble a second time if you can allow Gardic to deny himself to set up the yuma kill you take that every time and then afterwards you just kill Gardic off anyway because he comes back to the lane so nothing lost if you're osmium yeah, and that's where I am starting to get a little bit scared for Hikori because he goes down there again because he needs to get the XP, mainly because the Coddle's taking over mid because as important as the Storm is in this combo, if Elmisho doesn't have the levels in the Shocker Magic, well, you're not going to see that same level. At the same time, though, a little bit too forward from Slayden, and that's your double null just kind of making the play happen. in Sebus, uh, he's got to do the urn, but it's a little bit awkward for him to just run in there. Without X, he also just doesn't have the lockdown here. As Katyu's looking for an angle, don't know if he gets it. Yeah, Morph is off. A lot of damage, though. A lot of mana spent, but isn't going to amount to anything. Katyu just trying to be so sort of sneaky here. He was able to pull it off once, but at that point, Yuma is kind of looking for that exact play. So once he sees the rotation coming through, he's not going to take any chances, keeps himself safe. However, should be noted... Uh, with Yuma kind of bailing on this lane and with Sebus having the double damage rune, even without a siege creep, Osmium could just take this tower and kind of start roll oh, rolling some objectives and Sebus is actually going to spot Gardic. Hogs are not super useful. He'll try to TP out, but the X was there, the torrent was there, the spear was there. Gardic was not getting away no matter what. His Draken's going to steal the kill at the very end, but not going to matter too much. They're still just here for the objective. Yeah, and uh, it's a funny situation there because you do need the X. Sebus was very careful not to X himself. Would have been kind of funny, but the torrent wouldn't have been in time. But this is a nice smoke. Unfortunately, the ward is maybe even a little bit nicer from Gardic here. But they need to make sure they don't get caught in the mid lane. Analog is not the target. They cannot kill him with the heroes that they have. They would need to really lead in onto El Misho. But as we always talk about, if this Coddle does get removed from the mid lane, if Slayton can keep this card alive, then your mid tier one could really take a lot of damage here. Unfortunately, underneath the tower. Yeah, there's the glyph. Slayton, yeah. They need to keep this card alive. They know that this is a really nice opportunity for them. And if they realize how many heroes are top, Kataro needs the pull. They need to get the connect, but I don't know if they go coming, any further. Uh-oh. Got you in for the stun. Vitaly's going to get locked down. They throw a hex out onto Analog. They're going to just suck away as much of his mana as they possibly can as Vitaly falls. And yeah, Analog just has to try and get away. Slayton, though, he's there. He jumps in. He gets the point blank arrow to cancel that TP. Analog used all of his mana to try and get out. Cat you says... Give me a stack on the finger of death, and 
I suppose they don't get the mid-tier one with that, but honestly, that, that's kind of better off for them. Two kills, and I say they're not going to get the tier one, but they're right back in here. They're going to look for it again, and that was an interesting hook from Clockwork. He does connect, but he's going to get stunned up twice. Make it three times, actually, as the spear comes in. Illuminate does not hit Katyu. And Osmium are really starting to get the ball rolling here. They're claiming objectives. They're finding kills. Sebus could get the X down. He is going to connect onto Omisho. He's going to throw the boat out here as well. And now with the arrow. Yep. Got another kill. Ten kills on the board for Osmium. And Oh, boy. For Corey, this is not the start that you wanted. 4k down and struggling at this point. Yep. It's... Uh... It's a deficit, a deficit to play around as well as Yuma. Still needing to be very careful in this game. He's playing underneath so much vision right now. They still don't really want to find him, especially on the Marana. Slayton can't really afford to do it. And Slayton actually could die pretty easily here. He does get pulled in. I think he's going to get cut off from his team. So hey, there you go. A little Marana kill for you. Does Yuma hit the arrow? Aw. There we go. Doesn't hit the arrow. Slayton's arrow actually did hit onto Amisha, but eh. Doesn't really matter. The Coddle is just kind of there to make sure. So, Yuma gets himself a kill. His first of the game. Just the third overall now for Hikori as well. But, comes at a solid time. And it comes against a hero who, in that instance, was just kind of massively overextended. So, those are the kind of kills Hikori are going to have to need to convert here just to keep themselves going in this game. And, well, I don't know what else they can do outside of that. Find those occasional kills from someone overextended and keep on farming is really... I guess the name of the game for them, and uh, don't lose your storm. That's that's important too. As Kataro jumps in onto analog, if he had a secondary stun there, they would have been able to go for it. But I mean, that's casual, right? Kataro didn't really have to do much of anything to make that play happen. And next time around, if Sladen or Cat use nearby, that's just a kill. Yeah, it's where unfortunately Hikori have this really bad problem where they cannot really afford to show in a lot of their waves here. It's where again. You need that Blink Dagger on Vitaly, a Blink Dagger that I do believe is coming out, but it's where they're so behind the 8-ball when it comes to taking these objectives. Osmium are pretty much fine with sacking the top lane, even though Yuma now has an outcrop to play in. Well, because they can cut in behind you, and I believe this Blink Dagger on Vitaly is coming with, what, one component for BKB onto the Kunkka, and then, well, you're running out of targets. If you're Hikori, you need to find the supports, you need to find Katyu. They double smoke, actually, and I think because of that nifty word that Hikori had placed, they should be able to back out here. Uh, it's just smoke on smoke on smoke. In Gardic, hook. Okay. The hook is way in. Arrow is going to be used defensively, but now Analog and Yuma know, yeah, they've got the green light. They're going to push in, but on the back line, Draken, that's a nice uh, arena, but they need the damage. Sebus is coming in. Katara will arrive as well, and now they're going to start to turn this fight. Ghost Ship coming in. They're looking for the X play onto Analog. Doesn't hit onto him. It does hit Vitaly, but timing's so off here. Draken's already been taken down. Sebus is pretty low as well. He's sitting on a wand though, so he might be able to just heal up and survive, but Vitaly's just going to go straight in onto him. Blink Burrow keeps him locked down. Sebus will die. Can they get Sladen too? They can cancel his TP. He does have one leap charge that he's going to try to hold for as long as he can, and eh, Yuma would rather not go any further than that. So Sladen will live, but Bakori, with, uh, with a much needed sort of win there, and Osmium I don't know, just a little bit too broken up there in terms of their response and how quickly they got heroes into the fight. Yeah, and it really comes back to Hikori's vision. They saw the smoke, they knew where it was coming, and then I think Osmium, in the way that they popped on their smoke, uh, get caught on the ramp. I think Gardic finding the line so early on in that engagement, you now don't have your hex, you don't have your finger to play with, you don't get to use your finger actually at all, and then the Vitali Blink Dagger really just kind of worked everything in their favor. And even though that was also in return to the Mars's Blink Dagger, uh, Draken, while still being able to find his way into the Caudal, uh, he's still doing his job. He's still giving the man into the Storm Spirit. You, you don't even get that kill all too quickly. I think it's where they were just simply a little bit too split up between the Mars and the Kunkka. We didn't see them get to stack their spells. And now, farm time. And Hikori want farm time. They want this game to go slow. They want to be steady. They want to get their BKBs next up. But the Storm and the SK are looking at that next. And those are going to be your battle-ready items that, in tow, make space for Yuma, who is almost... Actually, I believe he has his Lincolns coming out on the Courier. Um, yeah, last piece on its way to him right now. So, defensive itemization starting to come online for all of Hikori. They're going to be able to take those fights that little bit better now. And down bot analog kind of sort of jumped in on. Not a massive 
uh, commitment there from Osmium, but Storm is still able to jump away, keeps himself safe, and Osmium really feel like they have let a fair bit of their momentum go. They're still using the same sort of farming time that Hikori are getting, but I don't know. Hikori's items feel like they're going to be a little bit more impactful compared to what Osmium might be looking for in exchange. Kataro is working his way towards a BKB. They just finished one off on the Kunkka now as well, so everybody's basically coming into this next fight with some degree of defensive itemization outside of maybe the Mars. No BKB queued up for him, but he does have the Hood of Defiance, so he's not going to be just sort of naked with the blink down. Yeah, it's a little bit more tank to deal with. He still died in that last fight just because of that Storm Spirit just getting you to uh, re-engage after so much was already spent here. But El Misho oh, disables the blink, gets the first death off. It's still running away from Draken. Yeah. I was wondering if Draken was just going to try and pull the trigger on the arena anyway. Could have maybe caught uh, one of those supports, but doesn't go for it. Meanwhile... It's awkward. Try to go in for the combo on Sebus, but between the Lincoln Sphere and the Morphling just waveforming away, he couldn't really make that play happen, but he did still throw the Ghost Ship out as the hookshot will come mid. They really would love to get Kataro here. Draken is actually going to throw down the arena, however, creating a distraction. They get an arrow in from long range as well, so Yuma not going to be able to dish out a whole lot of damage just yet, but they're still taking this fight slowly but surely. Draken will fall. Kataro is going to toggle his way out of here with the armlet. He will live, but... It still managed to find that kill. Draken goes down. It's still a bit of a trade-off, though, considering Vitali uh, was picked off just a little while ago as well. But Cory are now actively starting to initiate these fights themselves. And that could be all the difference for them. Whereas for the first what, 10 minutes, 12 minutes of this game, they were entirely reactive. Yeah, no, they were getting bullied. They were getting shut around. I think that trade offlane for offlane, getting them some much needed XP. And we're not seeing them as closed off as they were. And I think that comes really from El Misho getting the levels that he needs. Now that he's got the full kit, he's got that chakra to give over to that storm spirit. So it's not like analog needs to be afraid of very much. And with the BKB finished up on the storm, now he gets to play full confidence. I feel like we're going to see a smoke in a sec here. And now they would love to find Draken or Cat You. They find those lockdown initiators at the beginning of the fight, and Draken in the mid lane. Oh boy. Oh, he's going to blink in. There's the epicenter. They're just going to blow the Mars up immediately. And, well, uh, Hood of Defiance not quite as good as a BKB there. Didn't even activate the Hood. Didn't get the chance to. But now Ooh. there's going to be a return play, or maybe not. That's not what they wanted. They just kind of reveal their location and didn't really get anything. Cat just gets picked off. And now Hikori, they have a shot at this Tier 1 tower. They do have to wait out the Glyph first. But once it wears off, they're here in full force. So they will take the Tier 1. And how many more team fights can you afford to lose if you're Osmium? I feel like at this rate, Hikori, they've got the stronger heroes, they've got uh -oh. the stronger timings, and El Sebas! You can't, you, you can't, you can't do that. I mean, you just saw a five-man push onto your tier one mid. You can assume that they all sort of backed away, sure, but we saw what that assumption got Sebas there as he pushes forward and all of those heroes were still there waiting for him, so... Very awkward move from the Kunkka, just sort of staggering this Osmium lineup even further. You know, it's very awkward. That's her extra playmaker there, and maybe we see a change now. I believe Kataro has his BKB coming out on the Courier, but it's where, unfortunately, with the Mars specifically, just losing him so consistently really kills your plays across the map, because he's the one setting up for the arrows, really. Your X combo is not going to work the later on you go into this game. It's where maybe after 30 minutes or 30 seconds of fighting, you can find an X Torrent, but uh, without that, there's no real way for Slane to get onto these targets, not to mention uh, Cat Yu is barely halfway towards that Blink Dagger, so it's not like the Lion is going to be starting his own fights. They really are reliant on this Mars finding really anything here as Gardic breaks the smoke. They need Draken. He should be able to get the spear back. Oh, that is rough. They could still make this happen, though. Sladen's going to come in. His arrow, though, will miss. They're just off the mark entirely. That's a scenario where Gardic's just kind of checking himself over, wondering how he's survived that. But they can't hit with any of this lockdown. Then there's really nothing to be done. Now... If you're Osmium, what do you do? That was your smoke play. There really isn't any subtlety left uh, unless they're willing to smoke again, but 
does not appear that that's going to be the case for him, so... Missed opportunity. Kataro, meanwhile, um... Actually is not willing to disassemble the Echo Saber just yet. He's going to try and take the extra time and just buy it out, and... Since there's no fight going down, I suppose he is going to get away with that, but... It does mean that he's not available for that fight for just a little while long. Or at the very least, right, if he needed to, he had the components, so if the fight did break out, I think probably in losing the Kunkka the way they did before, maybe they look for the dis disassemble play if they want to fight immediately after they have their respawns, but uh, I'm just worried because the Kokori are kind of taking more of the map right now. Yuma's uh, getting shoved off any wave right now, but before he was taking top, Elmisha was taking bottom, you had your Storm Spirit farming in the middle end with Vitaly behind him, it just feels like Osmium are not hitting when they really need to here. And, well, Kataro has his BKB. Uh, Gardic would be quite the nice prize here. And with the haste rune, he could really get in and get out. But Elmisho, this is another nice ward. Ooh. Okay. Poor Steph was a, a, a nice attempt, but not enough to keep him alive. They find the kill. Analog, though, was pushing out in the bottom lane. Storm Spirit, not a sort of prolific tower taker, but he had plenty of time. So, trade out a support for a tower. But now Osmium... We're going to try and give a give Roche an attempt here, and I don't know if Akori are grouped up enough to contest this, even if it's not going to be a fast one from Osmio. Yeah, and well, Flare, there's always the threat, there's always the smoke attempt, and Gardic, he has to dodge past a few too many heroes here. That's also where, unfortunately, you don't have your Timber, you don't have a mid lane that really helps you with the Roche either until he gets this AC, so... They can't actually commit to the pit. The rotation, even though there's a Coddle respawning in the fountain, uh, cannot be made fast enough. And I think right now, Osmium are probably feeling pressured. If they mess up this Roche fight, they give an Aegis over to Yuma. Uh, the game could just be settled there as Gardic oh, gets arrowed. Mm -hmm. This might a lot be of a bait, though, honestly. They're going to try and go for that quick kill, and they do get it, but they didn't realize Akori had so many heroes nearby, so that's a quick trade-off. Yuma tried his hand at a... Uh... Morphed arrow, not going to be able to connect though, but now we have a stalemate around the pit again. One support dead on each side, and I don't know if anyone's going to be willing to break the peace just yet. The storm will check the pit, quick and easy. Another arrow in from Yuma, still just making sure, but at this point, I don't know which team could really even afford to try and push back into the Roche pit at this point. It just feels like the second you go in, the other side's going to be right on top of you. The only issue, as I'm looking across these heroes, though, is your BKB is going to be done on Vitali. Your Scotty just finished up on the Morphling as they go in, and they're going to find Draken. And now your Mars is dead. The Roche certainly healed up another maybe 1,000 HP, but they're going to go back. Analog's going to TP home. You have that recall from the Spirit form, so the Storm is not going to be gone for very long here. Uh, Osmium are sweating right now in their chairs. And they're trying to get their way over here, not committing fully, but at least uh, throwing things into the pit. So that does push Akori away, but they back off, they regroup, they smoke up, and it's very wise for Katara to back away there because he would have been just the ideal target for them to jump in on, but they will still find a target. Cat you a little bit too far forward. They take him down, and, well, Osmium are starting to lose their grasp, their control over this area. Roshan's still sitting at about half of its HP, so... Or you're going to try and get in here and finish it, and... Les Slayton's got some sort of miracle steel play in him. I don't think he's going to be able to pull it off and look at Gardic even just sort of trying to keep him away to prevent that exact sort of scenario. Yeah, uh, it's rough, man. It's really rough. And now Yuma is not really going to need to be afraid of any arena play, anything that comes out onto you. It's where the fights are just going to get longer and longer and longer, and unfortunately, a storm with infinite mana is going to love those types of fights. Not to mention, Analog is actually getting time to find that Aghanim Scepter, as Slayden is actually the one dying in the top lane. He's got one more leap. Yuma's become the Slayden, and with that arrow, too easy. Man, even hitting him with his own voice lines. That's, that's rude, but Yuma will find the kill. Hikori swinging momentum their way now up by 2,000 net worth, and Osmium need to try and find something. They could try to make a play here down bot. Yuma's not here, so they don't have to deal with the Aegis Carrier, but Analog's not going to be easy to lock down, and the Morph is sitting on a TP, so he would be able to get in there fairly quickly, which means Osmium are just kind of 
paralyzed at the moment. They don't really have any sort of immediate aggressive maneuver that they can make. Yeah, and, well, DV rune. Unfortunately, no bottle to give over to the Morphling, but, well, anybody that shows on this mid-wave could just die. It's why Vitaly and Yuma are stacked up so steadily right now. If they saw Sebas, that would just be a dead hero. They might reach for Sladen, and I think they will get him. <laughs> What's going on, on the other side, though? There is a play on to Elmisho. They get the kill, but Analog is going to zip in. He's just trying to keep heroes here long enough for his own teammates to arrive, and they're going to try and make something happen. As Cat Yu gets taken down, Yuma pushes in. There is going to be the Burrow strike in onto Sebas, and that's going to force the Kunkus BKB, but he might actually just die before the TP completes, and yeah... That is exactly how that one goes. Sebus will fall. Kataro now on the run. That Gardic doesn't really have anything to stun him up here. So if the CK can just get enough space, might be able to go for his TP home. He will do so. And you at least have one survivor, but Osbium lose quite a bit there. And all things considered, they kill off a Coddle. And that's kind of it. Yeah, definitely not worth it. It was really the only play I feel like they could have made on Osmium, though. When you see that jump happen in the mid lane, it's just unfortunate how far up the lane it was. If that kill uh, onto Slade maybe happens closer towards that tier 2 tower, then there's not enough time for that to be made, but it's just unfortunate. And now you are seeing them getting closed off on the map here, and uh, unfortunately for Osmium, a really nice play from Hikori is by taking up the space towards bottom. They're forcing their opponents into the vision, and unless Katyu really gets on the D wards here, he really can't be afford to be underneath these obs wards, but at the same time, can't use greeting out for the blink dagger. So you can't afford all those sentries to just place down constantly. Sladen's not really picking up the slack either. And do Hikori just hit the tier three a little bit here, force their opponents back into the base and take the tier two? Uh, they have so many good options. They could also smoke under underneath their own vision and then look for kills, but this is not a bad play. Damage onto the tier three, your opponents have to run it back. They love to kill Yuma. Cat use positioned. He could break the Lincolns here, but uh, they got the Glyph. The X is there. They need the Spear back. They're so scared to make this jump. Problem is, they took too much time. The Attribute Shift started coming through, so Yuma honestly should be just fine. He'll waveform back and regroup with his teammates. And now, if you're Hikori, technically speaking, you don't actually have to retreat here. You just got to BKB up on your Morphling, so... They could sort of double back and try to go for this, but they feel like that's going to be maybe a little bit too greedy at the moment. Back themselves away, but as they back away, Osmium are starting to leave the base, so... Competing smokes, we'll see who runs into whom here as... Gardic is just going to use that jetpack to push his way forward, and they got in onto Sebus. Draken missing entirely with that spear. Sebus is in some serious trouble. He's trying to fall back. He's going to use the boat defensively. And it looks like it is going to be enough to get him away. The problem is his teammates are still stuck in it. Katyu's already been taken down. Draken is using his arena, but they could still chase after him. He's able to blink himself out initially, though, and Makori won't go any further than that. Yeah, and, well, now you're getting shut out everywhere. You still have an Aegis for 30 seconds. It's going to expire, but at the same time, you got Glyph from before. The stakes are if you lose a fight on Osmium's side on the base, then... You don't really lose anything if you're Krikori. If Osmian are the ones dying, then you're going to get racks, plain and simple. Probably two with how far Yuma is. He doesn't even have a damage item just yet. But once he gains one, uh, then you're really looking at these cores on Osmium and saying, is there enough time here? They've gotten a little bit messy with their items here. Sebus would have loved to have enough time to build an AC for himself on the Kunkka, but Kataro says we need this yesterday, so he ends up building it, which delays his Scotty. So you're not seeing that real balance coming from any of these heroes here. Uh, not to mention, Draken's still working on a BKB of his own. The pipe's been nice, to be honest, especially for keeping his supports from dying to that Storm Spirit immediately, but it still means he can get caught by the Sand King, he can get caught by the Vortex. Uh, you're just not seeing this Mars really able to play with that same level of confidence a BKB would afford him. And unfortunately, that has kind of been the case a lot of the times where we see these Mars deviate from that build, right? Blink BKB is, is kind of a tried and true method for a reason, and... As you said, the pipe is helpful in terms of keeping their supports alive, but the sacrifice Draken has to make himself means he doesn't get to play the role that Osmium kind of need him to play. So, like I said, we've seen that in the past where the Mars sort of shakes up the build a little bit, either in terms of what he builds or the order he goes in. You know, sometimes convention is kind of for the best, but if you're Osmium, you're technically not out of this just yet, and... 
Well, he doesn't have a BKB. It's still a blink arena that could do you some good, but Draken's really got to find the perfect opportunities to make that happen. Yeah, and those opportunities are just so few and far between. And at this point, we're going into that Storm Spirit late game. The Ags is picked up. Uh, he sells, I believe, his treads to have another null to slot in. So we've got quad null plus the Ags plus a BKB. It's everything the Storm could want. Maybe even Analog Greed's out for a, for a synth here as he buys a fifth null talisman. Oh my goodness. This is so cool. Uh. But yeah. That's where uh, you also have to be so careful in the mid lane because the Cory they still have this word, but if Analog needs to be here, he will. Uh, that's also where I think he is just waiting for Amisha to recall him. The recall will be sent through, and now Hikori are onto your top tower. Still no signs of life from Osmium. They're still waiting here. They're really taking their time. They need armor items. They need blinks. Katyu finally has his blink dagger, so the lion could maybe start initiation onto Yuma. But you really think Hikori's going to let that happen. They've got four staffs. They've got items. They really have everything they need to stop that initial burst from happening. They really need to be caught sleeping for Yuma to die without that rebuttal. Yeah, I mean, I... I don't know at this point. If you're Osmium, oh, never mind, I'll shut up, because we have a fight breaking out. Cat, who's going to get jumped in on, and okay, that's not much of a fight after all. That's just a slaughter. This Cat, you gets annihilated. That's a nifty little boat play from Sebes, but they need damage, and okay, Kataro's in there. Garda gets taken down, buys back immediately. Draken now comes in, drops the arena, but with those BKBs, the spear, spear really just can't connect. There's no one to actually hit with that many BKB targets, but... Kataro got a, uh -oh, a snipe, but Gardic's right back in. Remember me? He's in there for the second round. They're going to get the Vortex down onto two. Haven't finished anyone off just yet, but look at Sebas. He's in some trouble. Down to a third of his HP. Slayton, though, does fall with the spider legs. I do believe the Kunk is going to make it out. Maybe not. Analog zipping forward, looking for the Vortex. Pulls Draken in. Not going to get Sebas with the initial pull, but Yuma's there to clean up. They'll take Sebas down. Draken is slowed by the bind, but they don't want to go chasing after him. And... I mean, that, that's a tier 3 tower that they'd be diving, right? They got what they wanted, they win the fight, they'll back it up. Yeah, and most importantly, if they scout up the Roche right now, they're going to be very happy with what they see. And it does make you wonder if Osmium need to actually smoke towards the pit, if they actually need to get this contest going. I certainly think they do. I do not think they can afford playing versus another Yuma Aegis here, but... I also believe that this is going to be a free Yuma Aegis. You've got a hero in the mid lane in Kataro, but without a blink dagger, even if he puts an illusion in to check to see if it's up, and I do like this. He's doing the same play before where he's baiting, saying that I am an illusion rune. I am not a real hero. So he's going to be able to walk up with the dodge and a regent rune from the storm. Mm. Oh no. Oh. That is so unfortunate for Osmium as Kataro will be taken down. Omisho. Okay, they'll be sacrificed, but now, yeah, they're going to go in on to that Mirana. They lock her down, they find the kill. Yuma's going to be able to pick up both, and... Boy, that would have been something if it, uh, if it had worked out, ET, but... When it doesn't work out, well, you're just kind of SOL there on your CK. You pretend to be the illusion. You try to get the, uh, the Chaos Bolt analog reacts to you. Gets a region rune in his pocket. I mean, you couldn't ask for a worse situation, to be honest. Hey, at the very least, glyphs back up when they do uh, try to poke your buildings here. Uh, they have to go through top, which is a full HP tower, more or less, so it's not going to be the easiest time in the world, but uh, with 40 seconds on CK, also got to be really careful here. You do not want to sag yourselves right now. And Cat you. Well, that's Ooh, a Lotus Orb. Well, that's a dead. Cat you. will survive for maybe an extra second or two, I suppose, but Analog should still be able to finish him off. It's Yuma, actually, who gets it, but either way, they'll push their way forward. Analog getting in onto Draken, pulls him back with a Vortex. They find that second kill. Buybacks are not in a fantastic spot right now for Osmium. They do have one up on Cat you. There's one on the CK as well, but with 15 seconds on his death timer, he is not going to be committing it, so they have to try and buy time with the Glyph. Works to a certain extent, but now they actually need a team fight win, and well, who knows if they can pull that off, because they still have to wait for some of these heroes. In the meantime, the Tier 3 tower goes down. That is a long zip from Analog, but he's got five nulls and uh, an Anagonim Scepter, so he doesn't really care. He just continues to zip in and out. The Axe is going to pull him back. Kataro will try to go for this kill, and, well, they do have it. kataro has got so much damage to deploy there when he is able to get onto that singular target, and now they want more. They got the arrow onto the Morphling, but Vitaly's going to come in, gets the Burrow Strike, going to channel out the Epicenter as well. Yuma pushes forward with the Waveform. Kataro gets taken down, and... This is starting to fall apart. Well, they killed Vitaly with the Finger of Death, I suppose, but they're just losing literally everyone else, and... 
Yeah, I don't know how much there's left to fight with. Sebus is going to pop the buyback, though, so they're not giving up just yet. But if they can't get through uh, Yuma's Morphling, this really doesn't matter. They can kill off some heroes around him, but Morph is always going to be the problem. Dragon, he needs to find the subs right now. He needs to catch these heroes. He cannot just allow this Coddle to stay along any longer. You need to take out this Coddle. You cannot just be afforded to give Yuma all this mana. He's just shifting up and down. They're going to at least lose two racks here in mid lane. Perfect. Okay. A read onto two. They need to finish these kills off. Oh, look though. at Vitaly, though. He's in with the burrow onto two. Buys the time for Yuma. And this fight is over. Draken is dead. Sebus will go down as well. You've got Sladen out here in a 1v1 with Gardic, but the results of this fight will not matter. Gardic will win it, though, just in case you cared, but that that's it, really. I mean, that, that has to be the end of it. They'll lose the bottom lane of Rax, and Yuma just is going to start going for the tier 4. Sladen's buyback is there, but there's not enough that this Marana can do alone to save the game. Yeah, and really, you've been holding on to the CK buyback for the longest time now, and it makes you wonder if he should have gotten involved with his teammates. Of course, if he does buy back, then Hikori just uh, go for the leave immediately. They don't get to test the waters at all, but it's really just that Burrow Strike from Vitaly kind of ruining the game here as Katyu is dead. Goodbye, Katyu. And so is the Ancient. Oh, Katyu just gets blown to hell, and yeah, that's it. The GG called. The Ancient was going down either way, though, so... Akori, well, they bounce back. I mean, this is the kind of performance that we said that they needed after that first game went uh, against them pretty early on. So they get the 1-1 split. They salvage that draw. They will sort of keep pace with Osmium as both teams remain kind of near the center of the pack here. Not quite up in that top area with the likes of Wildcard and Infinity, but certainly... Uh, nowhere near the bottom either. Yeah, and it is funny to see the, the teams in both the fourth and the fifth position also maintaining uh, pretty much the same uh, KDA. So Dogchamp might get the alley oop over, you know. It, it keeps it close, keeps it interesting, uh, especially with one team almost assuredly eliminated and another team almost assuredly qualified. It's where that middle pack team, it's where you, who gets upper, who gets lower. It could be a matter of a single game or who you lost to. It's where it does get a little bit fun in phase two, but... Uh, yeah, really definitive victory from Kikori. I think uh, the Yuma Morphling, gotta be scared, gotta be thinking about it in the back of your mind here. Uh, but also just, I think Osmium perhaps uh, losing their foot in the door there, got a little bit sloppy with their play, really started in top with Gardic getting that hook shot onto the supports, take a pretty poor fight afterwards. And then once you get yourself out of those really rough lanes, you've got the Coddle, you've got the Storm Spirit, they get the space to work with, and then it just works out for them. Yeah, Nakori, very nicely done. Get a, get a bit of a treat for us on the spectator side as we get to see that Yuma Morphling. Always fun when he gets to bust out, so they ride not just the Morphling, but largely the Morphling performance to the win, the 1-1 one, one draw away, and uh, with that, we are going to be moving things along here. Got another best of two coming your way. You were just talking about Dog Champ ET, uh, potentially with the chance to maybe leapfrog over these two teams we just saw if they can get a solid performance, they will be up next. The issue is they have a tough opponent. They are going to be facing off against that second place Infinity Squad. And it has been very hard for any team to sort of get one over on Infinity. So we'll see how Dog Champ stack up. That should be the next matchup here. So we're going to get the teams uh, into the lobby and ready to go. So stick around. We'll be back in about 10 to 15 minutes with that third series of the day.